The European Space Agency almost blew 600 million euros on a lost space telescope. I'm talking none of that than my baby, the Euclid Space Telescope. It's been a little while since I talked about the launch of Euclid, and it seems that this telescope is maybe cursed. It's faced endless challenges even before launch, including problems with the infrared detectors provided by NASA, delaying the project over a year, and then the Ukraine-Russian war came, leaving Euclid without a launcher. Finally, when you thought it was safely on its way to answer all the biggest questions about the universe, it faced even more woes. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu. Welcome back to my channel. This week, we're talking about how Euclid almost failed before it began. So let's begin. Euclid Space Telescope is our best hope in unraveling the mysteries behind the makeup of our universe, dark matter and dark energy. It launched successfully this summer on the 1st of July 2023 on a one-month journey to the stable point L2, 1.5 million kilometers away. You may think that's when the scientists and engineers get to doze off and maybe take a holiday. But that's far from the truth. The mission jumps straight into commissioning phase. So this is where everything gets tested and prepared for observing when it reaches its destination. I mean, it's just gone through massive vibrations and temperatures. So yeah, best to check. The two instruments on board, NISP and VIZ, get turned on for the very first time. And they even have to de-ice the telescope. So they do this by pointing the telescope at the sun to evaporate away any ice on the mirrors. They then unfold the antenna, which is really important because how else would we be able to communicate to the telescope and download our data? They check everything is stable with the observations and that Euclid is on its right path to L2. It's pretty cool that Euclid was even spotted from Earth making its journey. At this point, three weeks into the mission, it looked like the detectors were working fabulously, even though they weren't completely focused at that time. So the stars weren't as sharp as they could be, but we still got some pretty amazing images and spectra, which I did a separate video on, so you should check it out if you haven't already. But then the problem started to kick in. For some reason, the visible imager, Viz, was picking up more light than expected, just random streaks of light, but strangely only occurring when the telescope was pointed in certain directions. It turns out that the culprit was none other than the sun. Stray light is any unwanted light, like from the sun or the moon that enters the detectors. To prevent this, Euclid always faces away from the sun, and it also has this sun shield to cover up too. But it turns out that this wasn't enough. One of the thruster brackets was reflecting sunlight into the telescope, messing up the images. Stray light is not the only thing plaguing the Euclid images caused by our lovely star, the sun. Euclid's mission is beginning at the peak activity of the sun, so next year's solar maxima and solar flares, violent eruptions of high energy particles and radiation. These particles damage the sensitive detectors and sensors of the telescope, potentially leading to dead pixels, increased noise, or other forms of degradation of the images. They can also enhance stray light or even mimic the appearance of stars. The scientists massively underestimated the effects of solar flares, and now they're pretty much terrified that it could cause the early end of the mission. And the final kick to the face is Euclid's fine guidance sensor, the FGS. The FGS's main task is to identify and track stars to determine Euclid's orientation or attitude in space with high precision. This helps it align to the target and minimize any drift or vibrations. But during commission, they found it wasn't working quite right. It turns out that cosmic rays, which are basically high energy radiation coming from outside of the solar system and, and sometimes from solar flares from our sun, these 
can mess with Euclid's observations and be mistaken for stars. These fake signals can even outnumber the real stars at times, making it tough for Euclid's sensor to figure out the star patterns it needs for navigation. In other words, Euclid was lost. In some cases, it gets so tricky that the images end up with these wild, loopy star trails because it's not actually focused on a star. All in all, it's a huge mess. But the scientists and engineers are already on the case. For the stray light, the survey, i.e. where the telescope will look, is being redesigned to avoid as much stray light as possible. For the solar flares, being able to predict when they occur and scheduling observations around them could be a solution. And finally, for the guidance sensor, they need to reprogram the software to take into account all those pesky cosmic rays. With that said, fingers crossed it's smooth sailing from now on. On the 5th of October, Euclid officially finished its commissioning phase and is now ready to enter science mode. That's all for this week's video. As always, thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting. Please consider joining if you haven't already. Otherwise, I've also got some cool new merch on my website, so please do check that out. But most importantly, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.